Hello everybody and welcome to Z Learning right here at Riverbanks Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo and today for lunch in Z Learn, I got a whole lot of things going on. I got a face shield, I got gloves on. We are all about the PPE that we need to wear with these specific animals. But I'll pull up the shield for right now to talk to all of you before we head inside the habitat with one of our mammal keepers. But those of you who are joining us live, oh, by the way, hi, BB. Thanks for tuning in live. This week, later in the week, actually on Friday, the whole world is celebrating lemurs. So we decided to go ahead and take over today, do it early, because we are so excited. And we wanted to feature it live for Lunch and Z Learn. And we're gonna celebrate World Lemur Day in advance. We're doing it today on Wednesday. And in order to celebrate World Lemur Day, it just made sense to get our face masks on, our shield, our gloves, so we could head inside with the lemurs. So those of you who've been to Riverbanks many times before, you know where we're going. We're going to the Riverbanks Conservation Outpost, but we're on the other side. We're behind the scenes right now. You might be wondering where I'm hanging out. We're in the keeper area where all of those behind the scenes bedrooms are. And we're actually gonna be joined by Meredith, one of our mammal keepers who specifically takes care of the lemurs. And we're going to head inside with our red ruffed lemurs and the ring-tailed lemurs as well. So those of you who are tuning in live, thanks for joining us. I'm gonna give you <laughs> a quick heads up. This is going to be down for most of it. And since I can't stop talking to all of you and sharing all these fun, exciting things, it's gonna be a little foggy when I turn it back and forth, but hopefully you all can hear Fingers crossed, but you know what? I think it's about high time that we actually head behind the scenes. In fact, I'm gonna kind of pivot over this way. She's been hanging out right behind me. <laughs> There's Meredith. Meredith is going to be leading the way. And those of you who've tuned into Z Learning before, you know Meredith. We've done features with her many times. In fact, some of my favorite are when we've done meerkats before, but I will just have to out Meredith right now. She loves lemurs. So those of you at home, Start sending in your, your nerdy lemur questions. <laughs> Throw her a curveball, because we've got to talk about everything lemur today. So even beyond Zaboomafoom, beyond the Madagascar movies, we're getting into the real facts on lemurs in honor of World Lemur Day. Well, Meredith, I think it's time. We're gonna go ahead and follow you on in. I'll go ahead and turn around this camera, and we're gonna head inside with our red ruffed lemurs, actually. Perfect. Hi. Look at these two. All right, now Meredith, hopefully we'll be able to hear everybody. Yeah. Because you have a face shield on too. Mm -hmm. I have mine on as well. But let's go ahead and introduce these two characters that we're looking at right now. All right, so these are our red rock leaders, like you said. Um, this little girl on the right is Mina. Um, she is our 14 year old female red rock leader. And here is Mahambo. He is our 15-year-old male red rope lemur. Oh my goodness. I love how similar their names are. <laughs> <laughs> it, it comes in handy. It really <laughs> does. No kidding. Okay, now obviously they get their name Red Ruffed. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming because of their beautiful coat that they have. Absolutely. That bright, beautiful color. Now, Meredith, I think it's actually in our caption today. If any of you scroll down to what we're talking about today, but there are over a hundred different species of lemur. Mm -hmm. I can't really say worldwide though, can I? Nope, you can't. So lemurs are endemic, which just means they're only found in Madagascar, naturally. Um, and so, those of you at home, sorry Meredith, I just want to explain, because Madagascar is such a big word. It's actually a, a country and an island all in one. If you're looking at a world map, it's the big island to the east or to the right of the continent of Africa. And that's where all lemurs are found. <laughs> yes, they are. Now there was a question actually that came through and I lost it. Oh, somebody was wondering, what are they eating today? So today we have some craisins as a snack. They don't get these all the time. Um, they'll get them for special occasions and for training. They really, really love craisins. So the fact that they're eating peacefully next to each other right now is very nice. Um, because Mina is actually dominant. In the lemur world, most species of lemurs are female dominant, which means the ladies rule. 
How interesting. Well, that's so fascinating because a lot of times I think our guests and just any, in general, people who are interested in animals, they think of big lions, they think of big moose, bison, just big male animals. But in lemur culture, females rule the roost. That is amazing to hear. Now, is there much of a size difference between males and females? Um, not typically. Um, they usually weigh and are around the same size. Sometimes sure. females will be a little bigger, uh, but that just depends on the individual. Uh, Mina weighs a little bit more than Mahambo, so she's probably closer to 10 pounds, while he's closer to like eight or nine pounds. Which is really interesting to consider. They really don't weigh that much. And I know a lot of you are looking at our lemurs, maybe even when you come here to the zoo, and you notice how fluffy they are. They look very big bodied or almost kind of uh, cushy looking. It's a whole lot of hair though, isn't it? Yeah. There's well, really not a lot of body. They're very fluffy. It helps to keep them um, warm, but also, this is how Mina hangs out. <laughs> um, lemurs are actually pollinators, red rough lemurs specifically. So in the wild, they'll eat plants or flowers and get the pollen all on their face. And that helps to pollinate other plants. So that is one major role of lemurs in the wild is Wait a pollinators second. and seed dispersers. That is so interesting. Okay, so all of you Z learners out there, we have talked about pollinators so many different times, but when we talk about pollinators, all too often we get in the habit of talking about butterflies and bees. We need to talk about lemurs. That is such an amazing fact, Meredith. I'm so cool. glad that you covered that. Absolutely. Because lemurs truly are pollinators, so they really are an important animal into that ecosystem mm -hmm. where they're found natively out in the wild. But like I mentioned, there's over a hundred different species of lemurs, sizes, shapes, colors, you name it. They come in all sorts of forms. Oh, got to get all those little snacks out of there. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what, the unfortunate thing that unites all those lemurs, Meredith, what is the really unfortunate fact about lemurs out in the wild? So the major unfortunate fact is lemurs are the most threatened mammal group on the planet. 98% um, of lemurs are threatened with extinction. So that that's is amazing. a so lot of species. 98% of them, they're the most threatened group of mammals on the planet, which is another really interesting thing. Unfortunately, lemurs get kind of forgotten. Mm -hmm. All too often people think about gorillas or elephants or rhinos or tigers when they think of animals that are threatened with extinction. But the reality is these petite primates really are at risk. Mm -hmm. Now, I was very intentional, Merida. I was yeah. watching my P's and Q's. I said mm -hmm. primates. Yeah. You know, we've been to riverbanks many <laughs> times and all too often we hear monkeys. Okay, debunk us. Are they <laughs> so monkeys? They are not monkeys. Lemurs are what is called a prosimian. Um, and that just means that they are more, a little more primitive than monkeys. Um, they, the main difference is their sense of smell is their primary sense. Um, they're not too unlike a dog where your dog's nose is wet and that helps them smell better. So that is speaking of noses. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. Their timing, primary you know. sense is smell. So they do a lot of scent marking, um, to communicate, also to mark territories, and that's a really big part of lemur culture is scent marking. And while monkeys and other primates, their primary sense is hearing. So that's the major difference between Ooh. them. <laughs> I was gonna say she's she's swift inside, so we'll just follow suit. Yeah. Well, and I will say too, just given their size, their demeanor, obviously our keeper staff, Meredith included, don't have free contact going in with them like we do with lemurs, with all of our different animals or all of our different primates, even for that matter. We don't do that with our biggest primates, our gorillas. We don't do it with our siamangs. Lemurs are kind of unique in that sense. Mm -hmm. But I, another iconic thing that a lot of people know our lemurs for, especially our members who've been many, many occasions, is their noise. Yes, they're very, very loud. And tell me a little bit more. So when these two, this pair specifically calls, mm -hmm. 
what is the call for? What does it mean? Translate so, it for us. Typically, their very loud, very long call is an alarm call. Okay. And that just means, oh, something that I didn't necessarily like happened, or somebody made a loud, scary noise, or I want my dinner and you're not coming fast enough. Sometimes that happens too. <laughs> Um, but typically in the wild, that is known as an alarm call. Our guys kind of adapt it for whatever they want. Um, but that is, um, red rough lemurs actually have the most number of calls. Um, they, huh. that's their main source, form of communication other than scent marking. Um, so they'll call to each other a lot for communication in the alarm sense, in the I don't want you to be near me sense, all that kind of stuff. So if you ever do hear it at Riverbanks, it is alarming to hear. I always say it almost sounds more like a roar and a bellow than it really does a, a primate call that you would expect. But if you ever do hear it, sure, it might be an alarm call, but it might just be because maybe the two of them bothered each other for a reason. Like Meredith mentioned, maybe food came a little late that day. They're a little hungrier than they would like to be. So it doesn't necessarily mean that something scary happened. It just means that... They got something to say about something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, they are so amazing. Yeah. Okay, no, wait a second. This mm -hmm. is Mahambo, correct? Yes, it is. That's sitting right in front of us. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that y'all tell him apart is his little teeth. Can you yes. all see that? <laughs> Hopefully you can. Pretty impressive things there. He, they just stick out a little bit. He really does. Okay, so then if he has fangs, what are lemurs eating besides craisins? <laughs> So lemurs, our lemurs here, they eat a variety of fruits and veggies, um, and they also get a special primate biscuit made just for them. Um, but in the wild, they are also known as frugivores, so they'll eat fruit pretty much exclusively in the wild, but their fruit is different than your and my fruit. It's a little more fibrous, a little less sweet. Okay, um, so. And that helps them with being seed dispersers. They help like put seeds everywhere. Yeah. Um, well, and just so all of you know who are tuning in, when Meredith says seed dispersers, she doesn't mean that they grab handfuls of seeds and they spread them around <laughs> the forest on their own. It's not nearly that cute or that clean. No, seed dispersal means that they eat items with seeds in them, and then when it goes through their whole track and out the other end through their feces is how the seeds are dispersed. But it's an important role in the ecosystem. It might not be the most glamorous thing, and they might not even realize they're doing it. Yeah. But it is very important for habitat growth. But with those fangs. Yeah. So going back full circle. No, absolutely. Um, the fangs are actually used more as a defense. And it's not like fangs like a snake has. They're more like canine teeth. Yep. Like your dog might have. Except they don't eat meat at all. The, the canines are for protection. So if somebody's coming near them or an animal is coming near them that they don't like, they could scratch at them with their very sharp paws or try and bite them to deter them and to keep themselves safe. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> hopefully all of you saw those little, those little canine teeth that were poking out. Um, our two friends are hanging out right behind that towel enrichment that's hanging out on that limb. <laughs> Um, they realized that Meredith was out of craisins yeah. and that we didn't really bring any new food. Because I'm also looking around their habitat. I see some greenery. I see some lettuce, some broccoli. I'm going to guess it's not their favorite snack. It's not their favorite. They'll get to that when they're more hungry later, but they prefer the good stuff. <laughs> the afternoon snack, you could say. Yeah. <laughs> Too funny. Okay, well, Meredith, here, I'm going to actually switch sides with yeah, you. I'm going to get a little bit better of a view of these two as they kind of hang out here. Mm -hmm. But what I am curious of is... Why lemurs? I know you work with a lot of different animals, and I guess our, our Z-learning viewers are always so fascinated. What makes you so interested in lemurs specifically? So when I was just out of college, I think it was a year or two out of college, I was fortunate enough to get an internship at the Lemur Conservation Foundation in Mayaca City, Florida. And I absolutely fell in love with lemurs. They are so much fun. They are really, really cute and they make really great noises yeah. and they just, the working with them kind of made me interested in primates. I never wanted to work with primates before working with lemurs and just their personalities and how much fun they are to be around and to take care of yeah. really made me fall in love with them. Well, I definitely don't blame you. I don't <laughs> think anyone who's watching us live right now could disagree either. 
Mm -hmm. um, Audrey, I did just catch your question that came through. Audrey was wondering, are there any breeding pairs at the zoo? So we currently do not have breeding pairs here at Riverbank. Um, the reason that we have Nina and Mahambo together are just to be pals because lemurs do not do well when they're alone. Sure. Um, they are always in groups. So they're not recommended to breed, but they are here to be each other's buddies, to be each other's companions. Um, it's the same with our ring-tailed lemurs. They are not on a breeding recommendation. Um, and they're just there to be a little group, a little troop of lemurs. Sure. But Social dynamics are huge. That yeah. makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Um, BB, you were wondering how many different types of lemurs live here at Riverbanks. We have two, and we're actually going to meet both of them. So if you're tuning in just now, we are with our red rough lemurs, mm -hmm. our two that live here. And then in a second, we're actually going to go hang out with ring-tailed lemurs. So keep tuning in. We're going to meet both of our different species. Um, but I think it was, oh, April. April was wondering, I'm going to give this question to you, Meredith. Yep, you're good. Why are their tails so <laughs> long? So that is a great question. Mm -hmm. I love it have very long tails because it helps them keep balance. So they're very arboreal, which means they like to climb in trees and run around in trees all day long. Uh, and those tails help them to keep balance so they don't fall out of the trees. Um, I'm, keep, and, I'm trying to keep track of the yeah, lemurs here. <laughs> they're all over the place. But they, um, those trail, or trail, tails are very important for preventing them from falling anywhere from five feet to a hundred feet, depending yeah. on how tall the trees are, where they're from. Oh, and another good question. Sarah Grace and Benjamin, I see yours that you sent in. What is their main predator out in the wild of Madagascar? So their main predator is actually people. Um, there are plenty of people out there who, while they're going around, they'll actually be cutting down rainforests for um, different types of wood um, that people use. and. In general, lemurs, um, they will kill for bush meat, um, or they will take them out of their native habitat for the illegal pet trade, or things of that nature. So the leading predators, if you will, um, of lemurs in the wild are people. That is so unfortunate to hear, but mm -hmm. all the more reason for us to celebrate them early for World Lemur Day. And I do encourage all of you who are curious, interested in all the things that we're talking about, um, there is so much more that you can learn about lemurs. Obviously, Meredith could talk forever <laughs> about lemurs, which is so great. We just don't have the time for it today, which means that I encourage all of you to do a little bit more research. We don't have all 100 plus different species of lemurs here at Riverbanks. So why not dive into the World Wide Web? Maybe you have a book on animals and discover some more species of lemurs. Maybe something past the red rough lemurs and ring-tailed lemurs that we have here at Riverbanks. Is this Mahambo still? This is Mina. This is Mina. Oh my goodness. How, <laughs> how you keep them straight <laughs> is admirable. <laughs> yeah, Let me go ahead and see if I can find some more of our questions. Mm -hmm. Oh, BB was wondering about how long is their tail? I know we already talked about what the um, use of it. <laughs> that's a great question. It, it is looks like about as long as their body. I can't wow. tell you exactly in inches, but it might even be a little longer than their body sometimes. I was going to say, it almost looks like it's just shy of about yeah. two feet. It's a long tail, yeah. especially Mina's doing a great job of having it all curled yeah, up for all of you to see. Great. Um, Piper was also wondering, how long do they typically live for? So lemurs can live um, in human care. They can live to be in their mid-20s to even their early 30s. Um, yeah. They, in the wild, will typically live to be mid-teens to early 20s at most if they have good advantages provided to them. Okay. Well, I'm kind of surprised that she is eventually starting to munch on some of her other greens. <laughs> She's sad that there's no more greens. I was going to say, the less preferred versus the crazy. I guess I'll eat this now. Uh, exactly. <laughs> well, keep sending in all your great questions, everybody. But like I mentioned, we are going to be joining Meredith in a habitat not too far from here. So keep joining in. We're going to transition on over. Are you ready? Ready. Let's do it. We're going to actually head over Heading out with ring-tailed lemurs. So we'll say see you later to the red rough lemurs. I'm gonna go ahead and turn around this camera. Oh, and you're joining me on an adventure, everybody. All right, make sure we don't have any lemurs that follow us. I'll let Meredith double check everything on the walk. She's the official zookeeper, so <laughs> I just get to be the tag along for today. But here at Riverbanks, we have those two different species. There's so many more, not only in human care, but 
also out in the wilds of Madagascar too. So once again, I encourage all of you to check out more on lemurs. It's a big group of animals. And like Meredith mentioned, unfortunately, it is the most threatened group of mammals in the world. It wasn't that long of a walk. We're already here. We're gonna head inside of ring-tailed lemur and I'm gonna let Meredith do all the introductions again. Okay, let's turn his camera around again. All right, door number two. Perfect. So this is Kaikia. He is our 16-year-old male ring-tailed lemur. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and switch sides with you so we can get just a little bit better with you. Perfect. <laughs> He's a very good boy. <laughs> Oh my god, okay, well, sorry everybody, I'm kind of zoomed in a little bit. Ring-tailed, there we go, now we pan down, now you get the full effect of how they get their name. Mm -hmm. Okay, but wait a second, it's kind of quiet in here. We only have one lemur with us right now. Where's the other ring-tailed lemurs? I know we have more. Yep, yeah, so we have three ring-tailed lemurs, um, but our two girls, Shiloh and Gizmo, they are what we call protected contacts. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they are protected contact is because Shiloh, um, she is an ex-pet. So she used to be somebody's pet who lived in their home, wow. but she became extremely aggressive. Um, and she does not do well interacting with people. She has the potential to harm people um, because of that background and that um, beginning of her life that she had. Well, and it was funny that we, with Bahamba, we talked about their fangs, they have really sharp teeth, they also have sharp nails too. They might be very small primates, but here, I'm here to tell you all this, and Meredith would agree with me, they are wild animals. Sure, Meredith is hand feeding them right now, but they have all the potentials to have their natural instincts, which can include potentially injuring people, which means that when we have an individual, like the two females behind the scenes, Sometimes it's in our best safety interest and theirs to work protected contact instead. Absolutely. And um, one major, I mean, they're, lemurs don't make good pets. Primates in general Here don't make good pets. Mm -hmm. But um, so part of that reason is because lemurs, when they're babies for the pet trait, get taken away from their mom very soon after birth, days, months, if not days. Um, Ugh. And that causes some very severe behavioral problems, psychological problems for them because in the wild they would be with their parents for a few years. Wow. And um, what people don't realize is while they're really cute and really snuggly when they're babies, they'll latch on to anything because that is their instinct mm -hmm. when they're babies is to hold on to mom. So if you give anything to them, they're going to latch on to it and look really cute. But once they reach sexual maturity, anywhere from one to two years of age, they go through a drastic change. They get very aggressive. Um, and people who may have um, pet baby lemurs, will be like, well, they're not aggressive. They're totally fine. My lemur's fine. But once that lemur reaches sexual maturity, it can become a very dangerous animal in those well, that's such a good message. Well, and I do want to kind of mention, because we're talking a lot about the pet trade and how much we don't recommend primates or in general exotic animals as pets. I mean, stick with the domestics. I much prefer to snuggle up on the couch with my dog at home and not a lemur. I can't say that enough. But Meredith, I also do want to mention this individual that you're hand feeding right now, he isn't hand reared. He is not an ex-pet. Yeah, so Ikea was born here at Riverbanks. Mm -hmm. 16 years ago and he was raised by his mom in a group setting so lemurs are very social animals and they need to have that bond with other lemurs um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a large group but in the wild they can have very large groups um, and they'll always be in a group for yeah. um, their needs their social needs their mental needs all of that all super so, important um, and typically those Pet lemurs are solitary, and that can wreak havoc on their psychological and behavioral. Well, and even just missing out on all those P's and Q's, their mm -hmm. manners, you could say, because yeah. um, they grow up in a very unnatural environment. Yeah. So it's a very important message. 
we wanted to kind of share two different messages when it comes to lemurs on World Lemur Day. Not only their plight out in the wild, but also the unfortunate fact of the exotic pet trade and that lemurs are unfortunately pretty common. Commonly mm -hmm. kept as pets by mistake. I cannot say it enough how much we do not recommend that. <gasps> Dine and dash. <laughs> But um, what people also don't realize is that sanctuaries are at capacity mm -hmm. when it comes to primates in general, any type of primate. It's not like there's pet shelters out there for no. lemurs. It's not like where you could find a cat or a dog. Um, they are f completely full and the waiting list is very long for every single one, every single sanctuary. Um, and it does cost money for you to surrender your potential pet lemur um, and that's another factor that makes their lives very difficult because you realize oh no this animal became very aggressive um, and you don't have anywhere to put them then and that's not good for your safety mm -hmm. it's not good for the pet or the lemur safety and um, just in general for anyone's safety in that situation all great points. I hope all of you have been really listening because those are such important messages for us to share here at Riverbanks with our mission to not only create connections, but inspire actions. And sometimes those actions can be responsible pet ownership too. So definitely keep all those things in mind. Sarah Grace though, I see your comment. It was a little bit ago. She was wondering, red ruffed lemurs and ring tailed lemurs, do they live in the same place in Madagascar? They do not. So oh, um, ring-tailed lemurs actually typically live um, in rocky mountainous areas. So they actually will spend a lot of time in rocks um, and also in some trees that they have there. Red ruffs are in the actual forests. Um, so they're, I believe, on opposite ends of Madagascar. Don't quote me, but yeah. ring or red ruff lemurs are in a very, very small part of northwestern or northeastern, I'm sorry, northeastern Madagascar, while ringtails inhabit a larger territory than that. Great question, Sarah Grace, because you know, even though Madagascar might look small on a map comparatively, <laughs> it is a very large island which has lots of different populations of lemurs that can be very, very spread out. So great question. I really love that one. Here, let me go ahead. Do do do. Oh, Christina. Oh, this is a really good question. One that kind of stumps me. Why do they have rings on their tails? Um, the rings on their tails can also um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, be used as a camouflage. Um, it also helps them, um, like when they're in the trees, like the light shining through, you don't necessarily see those tails. Sure, it breaks but it all up. But they also, when they're walking around, um, we can kind of see by key here, they, they stick follow. them straight up. And that helps their group, the rest of their group, if they get lost, to see where they're at. Just a little like, oh, hey, look, there they are. Over there. It's almost like a little flag. So um, those of you, when you go on family vacations, maybe not now recently, not maybe this last summer, and you all wear matching t-shirts, it's the same kind of idea. <laughs> so you can find each other, who's in your family. Ring-tailed lemurs, if they all kind of look the same, they have that big flagging striped tail. It's a great way to stay together in your social group. Yeah. Maxim, you were wondering, what are they eating? We also had a little bit of craisins in here with Paikia. <laughs> yes, he loves those craisins. Absolutely. Well, I don't blame him. Craisin mm -hmm. sounds delicious to us, too. <laughs> well, we're going to let him kind of jump around and do his thing. And do his thing. Yeah. He decided that he doesn't want to hang out super close to us. Yeah. Let's go ahead and zoom back. Mm -hmm. And that is more than okay. Now, I will say that even though he is alone right now, that's not going to be for very long. Yep. Yeah. Once we're all done with Z-Learning, Meredith's going to go ahead and welcome the ladies back on onto exhibit. So there's all three of them out here in their social group. Um, we just couldn't come in here safely with the two of them. So we decided to split up the group a little bit, get a little creative, which helps us to bring Z-Learning to all of you. Let's go ahead and zoom in on him one last time. <laughs> <laughs> He's so very cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hopefully y'all are getting a great view. Oh, you can even see his little teeth too. <laughs> Oh, Dylan was wondering, how many can you find in a social group? Um, you can find any from 2 to 22 to however many can fit into a group peacefully. Even sure. not so peacefully. Sometimes they'll have little tips and everything, just like you would bicker with your siblings. Yep. Um, 
So it can, there is no limit to how many they can have in the group. Yep. But um, we have three right here. Yeah, well, and I would imagine out in the wild, it would depend on resources. Yes. There's plenty of food around, then it's easier to have a big family to share it all with. If it's a little scarce, it's harder to find water, food, shelter, all that sort of stuff that animals need. Yeah. Social groups would be a little smaller, maybe a little bit more intimate. And typically in breeding season, which lemur breeding season in the United States is November to April. That's for all the inhuman care lemurs. Um, mm -hmm. They might kick out, uh, like the males will get a little more dominant, a little more aggressive with the other males and maybe kick them out of their group. So they might have to go find another group or they'll form their own group and take some ladies with them. And it's, That's interesting. It can change, it just depends on ages and all that good stuff. Well, and I think I might be saying this name right. Is it Tatcha? I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but I really do like your question of how many babies can they have in any given pregnancy? Is it always one baby lemur? It's not, so it depends on the species, hmm, Okay. <laughs> so ring-tailed lemurs can have typically one to two babies if they're in a very good environment where there's a lot of resources, they'll have twins. Um, but typically they'll have one. Um, red rope lemurs can have anywhere from one to six. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Six yeah. baby lemurs. I cannot imagine how <laughs> their parents handle that yeah. in those groups. <laughs> well, the main difference with them is um, red rope lemurs are nesters. So they'll make nests and move their babies throughout the day. They don't constantly have babies clinging to them. Ringtail lemurs have clinging babies um, that will so you be on carry mom them. all the time. Yeah. yeah, they'll be on mom all the time, and there might be some sharing amongst the other females, but they always have to make it back to mom to nurse and all that. Oh, this is a great grand finale question. I love it. <laughs> Michelle was wondering, do they have stink fights at riverbanks? <laughs> That's a great question. They actually do. Um, I thought I would probably agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> so stink fighting amongst ringtail lemurs. So um, Pykea has scent glands on his wrists, and he will rub those wrists on his tail get it all nice and stinky, and he will wave it over his head and make a little squealy noise at the girls. Um, so sometimes that can be known, like seen as flirting, um, but most often it's a territorial thing. So it's like, I don't want you over here, this is my space. Yeah. But for Pykea, it might just be that he's flirting with the ladies or he was um, a little uncertain of them coming out onto where he was at. Um, but typically in the wild, they'll do stink fighting for territory. Well, how would you best, because obviously everyone who's tuning in live right now, y'all cannot smell with the environment that we're in right now. <laughs> Meredith, how would you best describe the smell of a lemur, that kind of stink fighting uh, environment? The stink fighting, I mean, I don't think it smells that bad. Yep. But some people might think that it smells a little stinky. Is it on the musky side, would you say? It's a little on the musky side. Um, it just depends on how much stuff they get on their tail. Sure, yeah. Um, but it's not necessarily like they're shooting stink at each other, gotcha. like, um, like squirting anything. It's like a wafting mm -hmm. stink thing happening. Um, well, I would say it probably falls somewhere between the smell of flowers and skunks. <laughs> yes. It's not a severe odor, uh -huh. but I wouldn't say it's a delightful odor either. Yes. <laughs> but it does its job. And when you have a really good set of nose, Anya, mm -hmm. and your sense of smell is so highly adapted, then it's a very important adaptation. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Pykea, we're going to let you continue to do your business. Let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit more, though, because I want to back up and say a big thank you to Meredith. We could not have done this without you. You are so knowledgeable on lemurs and all sorts of different things with all these different species, because it's not just about ring-tailed lemurs like this guy right here and our red rough lemurs. There are so many more lemur species. So dive on in, learn something new, and really, really just be fascinated along with us because they are such an interesting group of mammals. <laughs> uh, what a better way to celebrate early World Lemur Day. Thank you everybody so much for tuning in live. Oh, let's go ahead and zoom back. Look at that handsome guy. <laughs> Now, all of you Z learners out there, I know it's a little hard to see me here. Let me back up a little bit. I wanted to let you all know that 
soon, next week, we're gonna go ahead and release our schedule for next month for November. So keep your eyes peeled for that schedule because we got some brand new features coming in the month of November. Oh, and also before I leave, this Saturday, we have a brand new event here at the zoo. I know we've sold out all of our tickets for Boo at the Zoo, so it's been a very successful event. So thank you to everybody who's purchased tickets. But if you missed out on your chance to come to Boo at the Zoo, we have another event that you can join us for. It's called howl o -ween at the Zoo. It's a daytime event, so it'll be from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. And it involves coming in costume at the zoo enjoying a DJ here at the zoo in a eeky freaky kind of Halloween theme. And then all the animals, or a good majority of them at least, are gonna get pumpkins all day long. So join us for howl o -ween day at the zoo. Thanks so much everybody for tuning in live and we will see you again soon. Bye.